Hey guys, welcome back to our Porsche restoration project. So we're standing in front of our uh, long block today and we're getting ready to take this apart. So I thought this would be uh, an excellent opportunity to, uh, before we get too far into it, to go over some engine basics with uh, some of you guys who've never taken on an engine or uh, an engine in a Porsche before. Um, I haven't either, so we're gonna learn together on this one. Uh, I've done a few engines in the past. I got a basic idea of it. Uh, there's a lot of things going on with this engine we're gonna have to really watch out for. So for you guys out there who's got engine building experience, this video is gonna be really boring for you. For you guys out there who have never taken on an engine, have no idea how to go about this, and uh, would like to learn, what we're gonna do with the next uh, series on the engine is I'm going to create a separate playlist. We're gonna make short little videos and we're gonna explain each little step on the engine uh, little by little so that you completely understand it, uh, get it in your mind, ah, I got it, the ah moment, um, and then you're gonna have a complete confidence you could do this thing yourself, because you can do it. Uh, you're gonna to have to send some things out to the machine shop, no doubt about it, it's gonna to have to happen. However, uh, there's no reason why you can't completely understand how this thing works, how we uh, machine it, put it back together, and get it back in your car. So. First thing we're going to talk about uh, in this video is a valve lash. We're set up here. We got our rockers exposed. Um, so we're going to talk about valve lash. What is it? Why we need to have it? And uh, you know why it's so important as far as cam timing goes. Let's talk about that first. So checking valve lash on these engines will require a special tool. You can get this from pretty much any of the suppliers. Um, also the uh, thickness of your feeler gauge. You'll have to check the spec on your particular engine. So let's just briefly uh, acquaint ourselves with this engine a little bit uh, while we're standing in front of it here. So um, even though the uh, front of the car is this direction, this is really referred to as the front of the engine. So uh, front of the engine is always going to be this way when we're talking about it. Um, the crankshaft pulley here, this is stamped with a Z1 mark in there uh, and a notch in the pulley. And so what that is, that's a reference mark uh, in relation to top dead center and uh, it's going to relate to your camshafts left and right uh, when we get a little bit further into it. But for uh, top dead center, that needs to line up on your case halves, and this would be a very important reference mark throughout the build. And then uh, looking at the front here, uh, this is going to be referred to as our left side of the engine, and this is the right side of the engine. So why are we talking about all this basic silly stuff? Um, so when you're doing engines, it's really best to uh, never really take anything for granted um, you never really want to assume anything. You want to have a complete understanding in your mind uh, what everything is, how it's laid out, and how it's talked about throughout the process. Also, this engine was worked on uh, right before it was parked uh, over 40 years ago. It's got some fresh service work in there. What I want to know before I take this engine apart, I want to know, did the guy that was working on it, did he use the correct parts? Um, did he do it correctly? Is everything uh, measure out the way it's supposed to? before I just go ahead and assume everything is, uh, is working correctly. We can see over here on this side, um, we've already got issues here with the, uh, with the tensioner. Uh, this has got a manual override on it, uh, so this has failed in the past here. So there's been problems inside this engine. We're gonna find out um, exactly what's going on in there once we get it apart. Okay, so then moving on to our rocker arms here. Let's try and explain uh, what this is and why we need to have it, our, our valve lash. So, our valve lash is going to be right in here. This is a cutaway of the rocker arm, our valve stem. Um, this is our swivel foot on the uh, rocker arm adjustment screw. And uh, here's my, my terrible drawing of our cam profile. But uh, one side is going to have a lobe on it. The back side of the cam is going to be rounded. They're going to call that the heel. Um, and so our adjustment is done when we're on the heel side of the cam. And so what we're going to do, we're going to put a spacer in there and uh, adjust our nut and screw right here down onto the spacer and that's going to set the valve lash or valve gap. Okay, so now we know uh, where it's located. We also want to refer to this as uh, valve clearance um, and when we're referring to valve clearance we've got to be careful we're referring to the right valve clearance. So there's two valve clearances we want to keep in mind when engine building. The first one is going to be um, the top of the valve where it uh, sits up with our rocker a swivel foot there. The other valve clearance is going to be um, from your piston to the bottom side of your valve here. You also have valve clearance here. Um, on a stock build, this is nothing we're going to be worrying about, but if you're doing a modified build, 
um, you're going to have to worry about this clearance too because sometimes the cams, our cam here, uh, have extra long duration which keeps the valve open longer and farther and uh, could actually make uh, contact with our piston. So if you're doing a uh, performance build, this is something you're going to have to keep in mind right here. This could be a real issue. So you're going to have to mock up your engine, uh, do a dry run and make sure that your valves aren't going to connect with your, uh, your piston in that sense. So for now though, let's talk about valve clearance being at the top here of our uh, valve lash. So one of the things we need to be concerned about when we're setting valve lash, uh, particularly on these cars, um, some valve lash specs are set to be done at uh, operating temperature, uh, but in the case of this engine, it's really recommended cold. And the best uh, temperature range really to set this and get the most accurate is gonna be uh, these temperature ranges right here. So like extremely hot weather and extremely cold weather, I wouldn't recommend doing it because the degree of uh, uh, variation here is so small you could actually affect that so you can put a lot of work into adjusting all those valves out and uh, still end up with some problems there so temperature range real important to setting your uh, rocker and then lastly why do we have valve lash at all so the reason they put valve lash in here uh, is really provide for two things one is a uh, thermal expansion in the engine and then uh, the other and the main reason is for lubrication. So what happens is uh, when your engine has one rotation, this rocker uh, moves up and down to your valve stem here. Once it lifts off when we're on the heel of the cam, that's going to allow for oil to pass through there and lubricate the top of your valve. Um, it's also going to create a cushion as the uh, rocker comes back down on it, hit that film of oil, and then make contact with the valve stem. If we didn't have any space in there, uh, it would be very difficult to get lubrication in there. You'd be steel on steel and then you would have uh, some premature wear of your valve train and eventually crash your engine. The thing is the, the spec on this uh, valve lash is very important because it affects your cam timing, which we're gonna go over here in the, uh, the next video. Um, this has to be right in order to set your cams right. If we're, we're too wide here, um, your, your cam timing is gonna be late. If we're too tight, your cam timing is gonna be too early. It's really gotta be right on the money. And the thing with Porsche, uh, one thing I've learned on this car, they don't really deal in tight tolerances, they, they deal in exactness. So if they give you a spec that that needs to be, it really needs to be that spec. All right, and then having a look here, we're on cylinder number three. So um, we're on top of the valve stem in between our swivel foot there. And that's pretty much uh, what it should look and feel like right there. So I've already gone ahead and uh, been around the engine, checked the, uh, the other valve lashes. And uh, it looks like our technician um, right on the money there, valve flash looks good, and even as uh, camp timing is spot on. So it gives me some confidence that the guys working on this engine before I step in here actually knew what he was doing and set it up correctly. Okay guys, so that's it for uh, the short version of valve flash. Hopefully I haven't confused you too much. Uh, we're just gonna wrap up today. I'm gonna uh, recommend another uh, YouTube channel to check out some engine work. Uh, Especially if you're building an engine, uh, you can't get enough knowledge put together. Really need to, need to see a lot of builds, talk to a lot of guys, get as much information as you can, round it up. Um, if you guys aren't familiar with uh, Paul over there at CAV911, I'm going to put a link down below to his uh, channel. Um, doing an incredible job on a 69 over there. And he's doing some performance enhancements to his engine, so uh, he can show you some real important things there as far as uh, valve to piston clearance. Uh, you got to do a full mock-up. He's going to do that over there for you, show you how to get through that. Uh, really recommend checking that out. So our next video, we're going to go over uh, cam timing basics here. While we got our uh, dummy engine set up, we can learn how to do uh, cam timing, a uh, short version. And uh, basically, you can practice on that before you take your engine apart. Give you some confidence when you uh, spend all your money getting this thing back right. You're not going to damage anything. Okay, guys. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next video.